When you think of consumer-grade drones, what you picture in your head is probably something like this. Products by companies like DJI, with the main purpose of slowly flying around and taking nice videos, survey large structures or, well, just fly around for fun. But what if I told you that beyond movie drones, there exists a whole world of enthusiast drones. Quadcopters that are built to fly like this. These drones are not only incredibly fun to fly, but also push the limit of what's physically possible. Enthusiasts spend countless hours building, tuning and optimizing these wonders of technology, often without any financial motivation, just for the fun of it. Unfortunately, however, consumer drones have since been abused by criminals and terrorists, mostly due to their ease of use, and in this video we are going to examine how likely it would be for terrorists to venture into the world of enthusiast drones, and thereby ask ourselves whether or not we should actually fear the rising threat of so-called weaponized toys. Now, drone warfare on a military level is not something particularly new. The US has actually become kind of infamous for its prolific use of the Predator and Reaper drones in the Middle East. These tanks can have a range of more than 1500 kilometers and can fly for almost 24 hours, controlled via satellite link. However, for most people, the 7 figure price tag might be a bit too steep, so they would probably look for something a little less pricey. Some of the earliest cases of trying to use relatively cheap commercial drones for sinister purposes were the experiments done by Ohm Shinrikyo. This Japanese doomsday cult, responsible for the 1995 Tokyo sardine gas attack, tested the use of RC helicopters. The plan was to distribute poisonous gases through spray canisters attached to these helicopters. But after multiple crashes, they abandoned the idea, before anyone got hurt. Similarly, Palestinian terrorists supposedly sought to purchase RC airplanes in bulk, after successfully testing them with explosives attached. This plan was also foiled in the early 2000s, before anyone got hurt. It was not until 15 years later that ISIS successfully used commercial movie drones, such as the DJI Phantom, to drop grenades and other explosives onto coalition troops. For ISIS, the propaganda aspect of showing others being hurt obviously came first, but according to Iraqi troops, these attacks became an actual problem because there was just so little they could do to counteract them. The drones are too small to be detected by most radar systems, and when hurt or visually spotted overhead, it is often too late to stop them. Now, in the most recent and probably most famous case of drone terrorism, Someone allegedly tried to assassinate Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro during a military parade. According to most news outlets, a pair of DJI M600 drones, of which at least one was loaded with explosives, were flown near a venue in Caracas, where Nicolas Maduro gave a speech in front of the National Guard. One drone supposedly detonated right above him, whereas the other one crashed a few blocks away near an apartment building. Some sources say that the drones were shot down by snipers, but according to CNN, the explosives detonated prematurely, because they came in range of signal jammers. Looking at the videos, it does look like the drones were hovering when they exploded, which would support the theory that the control link might have been jammed and the explosives were set to detonate on signal loss or on a timer. Now, despite being botched, however, this attack has been seen as cause for concern, not because of what went wrong, but rather because of how easy it would have been to remedy some of the flaws. So far, drones have been mostly used to deliver a dangerous payload, for example, explosives or deadly chemicals. The disadvantage of such an approach is that purchasing or building a bomb is likely going to put you on a list. <laughs> and rightfully so, I mean, drones and drone parts are obviously a lot less strictly controlled than certain chemicals. Not to mention the inherent danger of building such a payload yourself. In the past, various bombers were caught by the trail of their purchases, by how they acquired the material. Furthermore, the drone in question was controlled via 2.4 or 5.8 GHz radio link. Since it is actually quite easy to jam these radio frequencies, an attacker would always have to consider losing direct control of the drone. 
not to mention the pilot would have to be relatively close by, increasing chances of being caught. And again, this is how the attempt on Maduro's life was foiled, by jamming the drone and then have it crash at a safe distance. So let's address the payload point first, because the drone itself can already be quite dangerous. In 2013, 19-year-old Roman Pirozek partially decapitated himself with a T-Rex 700 RC helicopter. The propeller blades are solid and move quickly enough to cause serious or even fatal injury, depending on their size. And as we've seen in our introductory video, modern racing drones can get fast. In fact, there are some ready-to-fly drones out there that can reach top speeds of more than 150 km per hour, without any modification. With battery, a typical 5-inch freestyle quad weighs between 500 and 700 grams, with 7-inch models often reaching as much as 1 kg and getting hit by such a thing alone can cause massive injury. However, even with the high speed and relatively small size, we must not forget that the motors are still extremely loud, giving any potential target at least a small window to react and duck away. Not to mention the insane difficulty of piloting a drone at such speeds, with the precision necessary. Certainly not something you could learn with a few weeks of training. How long the required time investment will be a deterrent remains to be seen, because one thing is certain, drones are not going to get any slower. So let's talk about the other flaw, because what we are certainly going to see in the future is the increased use of radio jammers around high profile events. Currently, longer range drones by DJI and many other hobbyist drones are typically controlled via radio on 2.4 GHz. This frequency is also shared by other things, such as cordless phones, baby monitors, microwave ovens and, most notably, home Wi-Fi. While it is easy to block this frequency, security forces always have to consider collateral. You can't really jam drones, but not jam someone's home Wi-Fi. This is why the so-called sphere of influence usually stays rather small. It should also be noted that the 2.4 GHz control range, especially in an urban environment, is likely going to be less than a kilometer, even without any jamming and not considering video range. But of course, there are alternatives. TBS Crossfire and Express LRS, for example, can operate near 900 MHz, relatively close to some cellular frequencies. This will not only make it more complicated to jam, because people might not be able to reach emergency services with their phones, this link also has better range and penetration due to its longer wavelength. Pairing that with video on 1.3 GHz instead of 5.8, it would be feasible to manually and precisely fly a drone from multiple blocks away, until it reaches the jammer's sphere of influence, of course. Finally, a hypothetical attacker could, of course, completely disregard any direct control and just use GPS waypoints instead. Open source flight controller software such as INAV or Autopilot have native support for not only custom waypoint missions, but also basic support for dead reckoning, simply flying straight ahead without any external input. As soon as the target is in position, the attacker could enter the exact GPS coordinates and send the drone flying up. The beginning of such a flight could still happen autonomously, outside of any jamming. And as soon as the drone closes in on its target, security forces could try to use anti-drone guns to jam the drone's GPS. Omnidirectional jamming, as we've seen before, is not really practical for GPS, because it could interfere with the instrument approach landing system used in commercial airplanes, something you really should not interfere with. But even if the GPS sensor was somehow jammed, the drone could still keep going for a few seconds, using other sensors such as the accelerometer, the gyroscope or even LiDAR. Directly ramming a person like that is pretty much impossible though, as neither GPS nor other sensors have the necessary precision. Now the attack just described, albeit completely fictional and extremely unlikely to succeed, would be very difficult, if not impossible, to be counteracted by a human alone. Anti-drone guns that rely on disrupting the radio control, GPS or video link are rendered basically useless when the drone is extremely fast and already on an exact course. The only really effective solution would be an automated turret or a counter drone that deploys quickly and autonomously to ram or destroy an incoming threat. Luckily for all of us, such technology already exists and even portable EMP weapons that can disable any drone without direct contact or jamming are currently under development. On the other hand, we've already seen people asking for a ban on quadcopters, 
or to at least have the necessary technology, strictly regulated. Which would of course not really work, as the majority of the technology is free as in freedom, open for anyone to use, contribute and develop for themselves. The knowledge is already out there and that's of course a good thing. Because despite all the dystopian pictures we've just painted, drones are an incredibly useful tool and their recreational use is the passion of countless enthusiasts. Ultimately, all these preparations, the insane time investment and the required knowledge of technology are probably not worth the rather slim chances of success. And finally, let's address one more thing. In a free and democratic society, fighting the threat of drone attacks might be a tough challenge in the future. But so has been the threat of bombings, of knife attacks and of truck attacks. Anything can be a weapon and what we as a society truly care about are the people behind the weapon, be it a modified toy or even just a pointy stick. <laughs>